shops nowadays people have the challenge that they need to move from an old source code management to something more recent like Git, for example. In such cases, they often have the problem that they have people who know the old way, they have people who know the new way, but they have hardly anybody who has an idea how both worlds work. Hi, my name is Dietmar. Uh, I'm always interested in uh, combining the best of the old and the new world. Uh, that's why I'm working as a DevOps engineer on IBM Z now, but I have also uh, experience as a consultant and programmer on IBM Z and I. What I, am I going to tell you today? Usually people have uh, only an understanding of one world, either the old way of source code management or of uh, version control with Git, but not with both. I hope I can give people a rough understanding of the other world as well. Maybe people can uh, find a common language this way. And I will not go into technical details, I will abstract uh, as much as possible and I only want to describe the logics behind things. Traditional source code management, the idea behind it is like you borrow a book from the library, as long as you have it, nobody else can have it and it only becomes available again when you return it. The idea behind it is to prevent two or more programmers edit a file at the same time. It takes place on one big central box that has basically screens and keyboards attached. Nowadays that is a software called terminal emulation. This means that the borrowed book as well as the unmodified original that is locked away from everybody else all remain on the one single central box everybody is working on. Sometimes there are problems, people go on holiday or get ill, but they don't return the book to the library first. And while the person is away, somebody else needs to do a change to the very same program, but can't because somebody else borrowed the book already. And also interesting to know, once you check back in a modified file, very often the original gets overwritten. So you don't have version control, you only have some kind of source code management. People figured out a way how to do some sort of source code management with those limitations. That would be like a change node going to the top of the file. Then the line that is to be changed is commented out. A new line is inserted below. And that way uh, your source code gets inflated like a balloon and really hard to read. Let me show you what I mean. Now on this video I just pretend I'm doing some important work. There would be a header for example like this. Maybe some more information about the initial creation of the program here. And what would be the git log or something else um, goes down here. And only after you uh, scroll down, you come to the code that's actually doing something. Pretend uh, doing a change. I would copy um, this section, fill in who did what. Then I uh, duplicate this line, comment the first line out. Note. In COBOL, the first six columns are ignored by the compiler. Column seven is magic. If you put an asterisk in there, the whole line is considered to be a comment. And in our case, everything um, in the later columns is code actually doing something. So I do my change, somebody else does a change if I would do another change, I would use like df0002 and so on. And 
I hope by now you get an idea what I mean by uh, code gets inflated uh, like a balloon and what is happening or how people did do version control. There is also a catch to the logic of this system uh, because oftentimes people have read access to the unmodified original in the library that's locked away from everybody else. In some shops they would even have read access to the private libraries where their colleagues keep their modified copy. So it's no whatsoever problem to get an unofficial copy of the file anytime you want. And if you need to do a change while your colleague who took the file is away, well, you would call the administrator of the source code management. Uh, he, he or she would make you the person who officially borrowed the book. Then you could do your changes, check it back in, and um, the person who in initially um, took it, if it, he or she returns, will find some way of getting the changes in there as well. A nice thing is that the whole staging process is usually part of the software. Like, so there are different stages from development, testing, production and so on. And that's all included in the software. You could also include your company specific rules in there like a colleague or your boss needs to um, review the code before it goes to production. That's all included. Things are a bit different in Git. In Git, you uh, copy all the code of the application to your local hard disk. This is not a problem anymore because hard disks are really large nowadays. And you only uh, check back in the files you modified or newly added. If you check in new code or modified code, you are the person who is responsible for uh, resolving eventual uh, change conflicts. But Git has powerful tools that help you resolving those. For example, I recently checked in something. I knew there's gonna be a conflict, but I got no conflict. And after talking to my colleagues, I realized, well, Git said, okay, there was one change in line 20 another change in line 50. I can merge those two versions, no problem. And the, both changes were included in the file. Then development uh, takes place in branches. They are like virtual copies of the whole code, but Git does magic that, so that a new branch will eat up almost no uh, disk space at all. In your branch, you can test out things. If you break anything, that's no problem. It hurts nobody if you delete your local branch. Once you got your code tested, you would bring it to the central repository, write a so-called pull request, which is like a ticket asking, hey, please review my code. And then that person would give his or her okay or not, and then you could um, merge in your modifications. Meta information like who changed what, when, why, and so on, does not go to the top of the file anymore. It is locked by Git. You can read this log anytime, and Git can also provide you all versions of the code that ever existed. It only takes a few clicks, a matter of moments, and it's much more safe than reconstructing something on base of comments that your colleagues hopefully did write. Anyway, I show you that as well. I did everything I did on the AS400 on my local hard disk. Here you have the log with the commit messages. You have the author of the changes, you have a precise timestamp. And what Git also offers you, you can compare any two versions of that. And it will highlight 
asked you what are the exact differences. No need to search for comments. It's all visualized really nicely and I really uh, recommend uh, this way. Just to compare, I have a screenshot for you on the left side. That's the source member I downloaded and on the right side is what I end up with on my local hard disk. Five lines of code are much more easy to read and to maintain than 40 lines of code. And the log would go in a different part of your programming environment, but everything is there. It's in a different place. And I think it's much more com comfortable as it used to be. So far, however, when it comes to staging, there is no universally accepted way. Some shops use branches for it, others use third-party software. We are in the middle of a culture change right now and there is no standard yet. Maybe there never will be, but yeah. That's about it for today. I hope you liked it. I hope it was useful. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked it and maybe uh, you want to subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment below and I hope to see you soon. Bye.